It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movies of February 28th, 1992, the last weekend of February, and we have five movies to look at today, so let's go ahead and jump right on into it, and we'll start off with our first movie here, John Carpenter's Memoirs of an Invisible Man, starring Chevy Chase and Daryl Hannah. It all started on a Tuesday in March. If George hadn't introduced me to Alice... Not doing anything cheap and meaningless. What do I owe you? She hadn't been so spectacular. Maybe I wouldn't have gotten so loaded that night. In ten minutes. I'll be as good as new. None of this would have happened. Something's happened to the magnoscopics facility in Santa Mira. Next thing I knew, I went from high profile to no profile. What have they done to me? Wait a minute, who are you guys? Keep your mouths shut, all of you. You're in a state of molecular flux. If you want to live, you're going to have to trust us. Where have you been? Everybody's looking for you. I'm here. Sort of. I want my molecules back! Now there's a price on my head. The single most exotic intelligence asset on the planet is ours. We don't sleep well. I can see through my eyelids. I can see through the top of my head. But I'll never sell out. Think of the adventure we could have together. Oh. Yeah, we could go to frontier land. Don't be afraid. It's me, Nick. You want to sit down? If not for Alice... We're the only people that can give you your life back. I'd be lost forever. You have a face again. You don't have any body makeup, do you? Dropped about 10 pounds. But I'd look great naked. Alice! She saw me through it all. I got him. Nick, I love you! Chevy Chase. Morning. Morning. Daryl Hannah. Wait, how am I going to tell my mom about this? Just tell her you met a guy. Could be serious. He's transparent. Memoirs of an Invisible Man. A John Carpenter film. You know, time and time again, we've been given the proof that directors can also can direct both horror and comedy. Uh, you know, like John Landis is a perfect example. I mean, some of the best horror films as of late have come from people with a comedy background. Jordan Peele's, for example... Uh, John Krasinski with the Quiet Place movies, and even recently, there's been a lot of good word of mouth about Barbarian, directed by Zach Krieger of The Whitest Kids You Know. But it's sad for me to say that John Carpenter is sadly no John Landis. I mean, he's a great director, fantastic director. All of his, Most of the stuff that he's made has been really good. Halloween, The Thing, just so many great movies to his name, and really, this was just... This was a major missed opportunity. I think the trailer showed off a lot of potential for what this could have been. Uh, this was when Chevy Chase was still popular. John Carpenter was still a reliable name. His last film, uh, They Live, which was a big hit. Really, you didn't feel, think they could, this could go wrong. And I mean, this movie was also going to, at one point, going to be directed by Ivan Reitman, which would have been very interesting to see, especially after he had done Kindergarten Cop. But of course, that didn't happen. And, uh,. Uh, one of the problems with the movie is that it definitely doesn't feel like a John Carpenter movie. You're trying to combine a Carpenter film with something that Chevy Chase would do, and it just doesn't blend together very well at all. Uh, some of the positives I have for this, the visual effects in this movie are really impressive. It's industrial light and magic putting the, a lot of time and effort into this, and it really does hold up even after 30 years. And um, uh, really the biggest problem, I think, the cast in this movie doesn't really work all that well. They have a really good cast here. You've got uh, Chase, of course, Dale Hanna, uh, Sam Neill, pre-Jurassic Park. They're doing the best with the material given to them, but the script doesn't really give them a lot to work with. They're just there to play basic characters. And for the most part, Chase and Hanna's relationship, their chemistry, works pretty well. And I would honestly say it's one of the strongest points of the film that really works. But um, the script really is a major problem. They take a potentially brilliant new take on The Invisible Man and just kind of take the cheap way out. It's like it's trying to be safe and marketable to people. And you have some great writing people on here. Dana Olson wrote The Burbs. Uh, later would go on to write George of the Jungle, which is one of the better adaptations of a TV series. Uh, William Goldman, an Oscar-winning writer for Butch Cassidy, The Sundance Kid, All the President's Men, he wrote The Princess Bride. Two very solid writers, and it really just feels like they're just cashing a paycheck here. And like I said before, it's John Carpenter not really seeming like the right fit for this type of film. Maybe if he got somebody like Reitman or John Landis to do this, probably would have worked a lot better. But um, 
I mean, to the movie's credit, it's not terrible. It's definitely a lot better than Chase's last February film, which was Nothing But Trouble, which is a, an abomination on so many levels. There is effort being put into this. I just don't think it worked out as well as I think they wanted it to. It's a major missed opportunity. It's a, it's a movie that I'm glad I saw it. I thought it was somewhat decent, but it's definitely very forgettable. It's like, as soon as I watched it, I immediately forgot about it afterwards. It's just like, it's not one that's going to warrant a lot of rewatchability, but, um, I mean, I'm glad I saw it once, but I'm probably not going to watch it again anytime soon, so. That's Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is Gate 2. The first time was just a warning. against evil. Interdimensional contact with beings whose power can be used for anything you want. Anything. Stay inside the circle! It's working! This time, it's not coming through your backyard. Ah! Oh my god! This time, it comes through you. Never saw this movie before, never saw the first gate, but the first gate had an interesting idea to it, but uh, just from the trailer that I saw, but gate two just really looks like they're just rehashing the same plot as the first movie, and um, I mean, it's got Bobby Hill in it, uh, Pam Segal, uh, of course, uh, nowadays she's Pam Adlon, who has also been great on Better Things, she's done a lot of great voice work ever since this movie, uh, she's in it. That's pretty much all I got for you on this one because I really know nothing else about it and um, I haven't seen it so I can't really comment on it. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and move along, move on to the next movie and that is Armand Asante and Antonio Banderas starring in The Mambo King. You write the music, you let me worry about the business and we're all going to get rich and happy and famous here in America. Lucky me, stupid king In 1952... The Castillo brothers came to America I love this country. with a suitcase full of songs and a head full of dreams. Just off the boat and you think you're going to land a gig in a downtown club. There is more to life than just playing mambo. I love us. But as the music played... You had to kiss me on stage. I know that, right? <laughs> Pounded. Have a Havana with me, sister. Let's see how Fernando Perez can take the Mumbo Kings to the top. Passions raged in my own way. I have loved you. You really don't know how lucky you are to have a woman like Dolores. Tempers flared. Why do I always have to do what you want? And only their music could keep two brothers. You sign with me, mi amigo, and your future is cool. From falling apart. Please, don't break his heart. Nobody owns the Castillo brothers. Be careful, Nestor. prize-winning pages of the steamy and controversial bestseller, The Mambo Kings. You know, honestly, this is kind of an underrated gem. I don't think this director has done anything of noteworthy this after this movie. This director, Arnie Glinch Glimcher, I think I'm pronouncing that name right, uh, he did uh, Just Cause, which um, I can't remember who was in it. Sean Connery and Lawrence Fishburne, uh, that's probably his biggest movie that he made as a director after this movie. But then after that, he just kind of disappeared. He made one more movie in 99, and then he hasn't been heard from since. I don't know if he's passed away or just hasn't gotten any film off since then. But um, he did a pretty good job with this movie. He has some great... He has a great casting in here with Armand Asante and Antonio Banderas. You also have uh, Kathy Moriarty in here. The music overall is very nicely done. The visuals are very nice. 
it's a nice little film. It's a movie that doesn't really get a whole lot of attention. Uh, one of its songs, Beautiful Maria, My Soul, got a nomination for an Academy Award, which, if you heard that song, it's actually really good. So, yeah, this is definitely a movie that's very underrated. It's a movie that I think people should run, should find out, find it if you can. I'm sure you can find it on streaming somewhere for free, and or maybe on DVD, but... Um, I'd say definitely check it out. It's definitely a very underrated movie, and it also kind of shows Antonio Banderas is like how he started his his potential as an actor because I think this was one of his earliest movies that he was in before he broke out into stardom in the '90s. So, yeah, I'd say definitely check out the Mambo Kings if you can. So, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is Liam Neeson and Laura San Giacomo in Under Suspicion. Is this your gun? I said, is this your gun, Mr. Aaron? If Tony Aaron is guilty... You owe people a lot of money. So what? I owe money. That's not a crime, is it? He's going to hang. What is your current profession? I'm a private detective. You're a witness. And what does the majority of your work consist of? I do a lot of matrimonial work. <laughs> Behind the crime. Keep the guests in their rooms. Just make sure nobody leaves. That was a scandal. You think I killed my wife and then I killed a complete stranger as well? Does that make sense? His real name was Carlo Stasia, a famous painter. He changes his will so that she gets everything and that same day he's murdered. Was she his mistress? Behind the scandal. What are you doing here? Same as you. Was a mystery no one could solve. Well, somebody set me up here, Frank. This is enough to convict you. Yes, Angeline, she did it. Everyone had a motive. I think his wife killed them. I'll pay you. I'm doing my investigation. It's not yours. Everyone had a secret. I can't go to prison. I can't go to prison. Everyone is under suspicion. Angeline! I warned you, didn't I? Keep out of this. Do you think people know what they're doing? No! Or do you think we're driven by things we can't control? We're nothing you and me. You're in it together, aren't you? Search the house again. We have to trust each other. Did you see who it was? I know exactly who it was. She's a liar! She's making it up! I'm innocent! I'm innocent! Liam Neeson. People are capable of anything. Laura San Giacomo. Things just got out of hand. Under suspicion. I guess this is the title they use all the time because when I tried to look for this trailer online, I thought I had it, but it turns out I had a trailer for the 1999 movie Under Suspicion, which had uh, Morgan Freeman, Gene Hackman, and it was directed by the guy who did uh, Blown Away, which we'll get to in 94. But um, now this movie is just pretty much a different story. This is basically just... It's an erotic thriller. That's pretty much what this tr is. The trailer doesn't really show, but looking it up online, it's just an er another erotic thriller and really not one that doesn't seem like it's all that memorable. And, um... You haven't seen it. Can't really comment on it too much, but, um... But, uh, yeah. That's pretty much all... That's pretty much all I got for you. I, I'm sorry, I can't... I can't really go into most of these movies that I haven't seen. I don't know what you want me to do, but, um... Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the last movie here, if I can get the title here. And that is, uh, Where Angels Fear to Tread. Room with a view, and how it's at. Enjoy yourself, Lilia! God bless you! Where Angels Fear to Tread. This is essentially a Merchant Ivory movie, but it's not made by the Merchant Ivory people. It's based off of a story by e. M. a book by E.M. Foster. It's got Helen and Bottom Carter in it, and Judy Davis, and Helen Mirren. Again, that's pretty much all I got for you because I haven't seen this movie. I can't really comment on it too much, but um, it's like I said, it's written by the same person that also gave us a room with a view, and then how it's end later in the year. That's it. That's <laughs> again. I'm sorry, I'm not giving you too much here, but um, yeah, that's really all I can give you. It doesn't look too bad though. I mean, it's just not my type of thing, so. That's it. That's all I got for you on Where Angels Feel to Tread. Fear to Tread. So that kind of ended on a sour note, but uh, that's going to do it for another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, next time, we'll talk about the first five new films of March 92, including uh, the, one of the bigger hits of the, t of the time period, and that was The Lawnmower Man. We also have Cuba Gooding Jr. and Gladiator. Not that Gladiator, a different Gladiator. This one's about boxing. Uh... <laughs> But uh, we also have the crime comedy Once Upon a Crime, uh, the comedy Blame It on the Bellboy, and also Terminal Bliss. So we'll look at those movies next time we meet. 
Uh, thank you guys for watching, and as always, if you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, and until then, take care.